Inflation is the general rise in the price level of all goods in a country, which reduces the purchasing power of money. Reduced purchasing power means that each dollar of income will buy fewer items than before. The main index used to measure inflation is the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, and it is the number that media uses when calculating inflation rates. To measure inflation, they subtract last year's price index from this year's price index and divide by last year's index, which if you notice, is the percent change formula. Finally, multiply by 100 to express this as a percentage. In this numerical example using CPI data for 2007, there's a price index of 207.3 and 2006 has a price index of 201.6. You can calculate the inflation rate and find that it is 2.8%. The Bureau of Labor Statistics rounds to the first decimal place. We can then use the rule of 70 to quickly calculate the time it takes the price level to double. Divide 70 by the percentage rate of inflation and the result is the approximate number of years for the price level to double. Here the inflation rate is 2.8%, so divide 70 by 2.8 and you get the number 25. Therefore, it would take about 25 years for prices to double at that rate of inflation. If the inflation rate is 7%, then it will take about 10 years for prices to double. This global perspective shows the inflation rates of five different countries. You can see that for the United States, the inflation rate has been generally slightly higher than the other countries. This figure shows the inflation rate in the U.S. from 1960 to 2010. Notice the large spikes in the 70s, which are a result of several factors including the oil embargo and other economic shocks. Just like with unemployment, there are also different types of inflation. The first is the more desirable demand-pull inflation. Demand-pull inflation is a result of spending increasing faster than production. It is often described as too much spending chasing too few goods. However, if controlled, demand-pull inflation can indicate a steadily growing economy with demand pulling prices and productivity higher. Cost-push inflation, the less desirable type, occurs as prices rise because of a rise in per-unit production costs. In cost-push inflation, prices rise but output falls. Rising costs reduce profits and reduce the amount of output producers are willing to supply at the existing price level. As a result, the economy's supply of goods and services declines and the price level rises. Supply shocks have been the major source of cost push inflation. These typically occur with dramatic increases in the price of raw materials or energy. So what are the effects of inflation? Anticipated inflation is typically planned for by businesses by offering steady increases in wages so nominal income rises with inflation. Nominal income is the number of dollars received as wages, rent, interest, or profit. You can use nominal income and inflation rates to find real income. Real income refers to the purchasing power of your income or how much can actually be purchased with your income. If anticipated, inflation will have very little impact on a society's real income. Unanticipated inflation, though, can be harmful. Real income can decrease even with an increase in nominal income if the inflation rate is higher than the increase in nominal income. If you expect the inflation rate to be 2% and your boss gives you a 3% raise, then you're fine. But if inflation unexpectedly jumps to 7%, then you're actually going to receive 4% less in real income even with that 3% raise. Harm from unanticipated inflation causes real incomes and wealth to be redistributed. Were the inflation to be expected, people could plan ahead for it. Those, unex those expecting inflation may be able to adjust their work or spending activities to avoid or lessen the effects. Unanticipated inflation has stronger impacts. Fixed income groups will be hurt because their real income suffers. Their nominal income doesn't rise with prices. Savers will be hurt by unanticipated inflation because interest rate returns may not cover the cost of inflation. Therefore, their savings will lose purchasing power. For example, if you have a savings account that gives you 3% back on everything you save, but the inflation rate is 7%, you're actually losing 4% on your money every year. 
Creditors, or lenders, can be harmed by unanticipated inflation because interest on payments received may be less than the inflation rate. Payments will have less purchasing power for the lender because the lender did not correctly anticipate and account for inflation. If inflation is anticipated, the effects of inflation may be less severe since wage and pension contracts may have inflation clauses or cost of living adjustments built into them. And interest rates will be high enough to cover the cost of inflation to savers and lenders. Debtors or borrowers can actually be helped by an unanticipated inflation because interest payments may be less than the inflation rate. So borrowers receive dear money and are paying back cheap dollars. If inflation is anticipated, lenders plan ahead. Inflation premium is the amount of the interest rate is raised to cover the effects of anticipated inflation. So the real interest rate is defined as the nominal rate minus the inflation premium. This figure shows the inflation premium and nominal and real interest rates. The inflation premium, or the expected rate of inflation, gets built into the nominal interest rate. Here, the nominal interest rate of 11% comprises the real interest rate of 5% plus the inflation premium of 6%. In the past, deflation has been as much a problem as inflation. For example, the 1930s depression was a period of declining prices and wages. The effects of deflation are the reverse of those of inflation. Also, it's important to note that many families are simultaneously helped and hurt by inflation because they are borrowers and earners and savers. Effects of inflation are arbitrary in terms of individuals who will benefit and individuals who are harmed, regardless of society's goals.